Hmm. So we actually have the same glasses, I noticed. <laughs> These are the Bella Hadid collaboration with Chrome Hearts. Yeah, that was about the only stylish thing I saw in him. Long bells. It's just a delusion, it's a fantasy. Screams con artists. Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today's video was much requested. As soon as the Netflix documentary, The Tinder Swindler was released, I got a lot of messages in my DMs saying, Emma, have you watched the documentary? I'd love to hear your thoughts and would you do a video on this? As I talk a lot about dating and relationships, I thought this one was very relevant to my channel and I want to delve into it. So first I'm gonna review the case, the documentary on Netflix, then I'm gonna give my own personal thoughts and all the red flags that were ignored and why I would never have swiped right on this guy. The story starts in July 2018 with a girl living in London called Cecilia. She's studying for her masters and she's bored one day, so she's swiping on Tinder. And she suddenly matches with Simon Levi. Now, Simon is an average looking guy, but he has a big lifestyle. He's flying on jets, he's on yachts, he's driving supercars, he has an expensive taste in watches. And she said he was living a lifestyle very different to hers. He invites her for a coffee at the Four Seasons in London, and he's claiming to be the son of billionaire Len Levev, who's known as the King of Diamonds. He's an Israeli businessman. The coffee date went well, and then he invites her within 24 hours to fly with him on a jet to Bulgaria. And she flies to Bulgaria, they have a intimate time, they sleep together, and then she leaves the next day. She says that she wasn't sure if she'd hear from him again, but she does and he's messaging her, very sweet messages. He sends her a hundred red roses and he's got her hooked. <laughs> She's like, wow, I've met my Prince Charming. And that's where the relationship evolves. Very shortly afterwards, he's calling her his girlfriend. He works in the diamond industry. So he tells her that he has a lot of enemies. At one point there was an attack by his enemies and the video shows him and the bodyguard in an ambulance. The bodyguard has blood on his head. He has blood on his t-shirt and they're there with a paramedic and it seems there's been some attack. He says, I'm so grateful that my bodyguard took most of the hit because it could have been me, I could have been killed. So he's creating this sensational kind of story. He claims he has a problem with his enemies, these mysterious enemies, and that he needs to have some cash that is untraceable. What does she do? She takes out a loan and it escalates and he's suddenly all the money's gone, he's spent it real fast and he needs more. So he says, can you please take out a credit card in your name? And it's just for security reasons because my enemies are tracing me with my name. So she takes out the credit card in her name. He spends like two, three thousand and he suddenly wires the money back. So she pays off the debt and suddenly the card gets maxed out. It's not enough. He says, no problem. I'm going to employ you as a employee in my company as I'm the CEO, I can do that. And I'm gonna give you a pay slip that shows you make 90,000 a month. What do Amex do? They see the pay slip and boom, they increase her limit to 200,000. <sighs> okay, this is where it gets really juicy. So he is effectively maintaining this long distance relationship through voice notes, messages, very affectionate words, and she is bank rolling his lifestyle. And he's flying on jets, he's booking restaurants, he's taking everyone out for dinner, he's entertaining his new girlfriends, which I'm gonna come on to later, and seducing them with this amazing lifestyle. So Cecilia's debt is amounting to 250,000, and she's got eight different creditors that she owes money to. She's suddenly saying, look, I need the money back. He says, no problem, I'm gonna send you a check for 500,000. What happens, but the check does not work, the check bounces. She rings up Amex, she speaks with some agents. They say, can you show us a picture of this guy? She shows them a picture of her boyfriend and they say, I'm sorry, this guy is well known to us. He is a professional criminal and he does this for a living. She ends up leaving London, going back to Norway back to her parents and she is so devastated, so heartbroken. She's got suicidal thoughts and she checks herself into a psychiatric ward. He's still on Tinder, he's still matching with women. He matched with this girl, Penilla, 
and he tried to make a romantic advance with her but she did not feel the connection so they maintained a friendship. Yes, he manages to extract money from Penilla saying I need help. I think the total was 140,000 and when she asked for the money back again he does the same thing. The money's coming, money never comes and then he's like okay look I have a Rolex watch uh, that will cover it, take my Rolex. So she flies to take the Rolex and when she gets back she finds out that it is a fake Rolex watch. This brings me on to the third woman, Eileen, who's actually been dating Simon for 14 months and she's waiting for him to come off a plane, she's on the tarmac and she's just scrolling through her phone and she comes across this article called The Tinder Swindler and it's by a journalist who's obviously taken the story from Cecilia and Penilla and it has everything about how he's defrauded women. And Eileen is there thinking, oh my gosh, because I have given this guy money and I've given him up to 140,000. And she actually realizes that she is in a very powerful position because he's been exposed, because now there's that article out there, he can't continue to con other women. So she decides, I'm gonna get my money back. So she plays the act, she plays the game. She's saying, I believe you, I trust you. You can call these girls bitches. <laughs> he's claiming they're just heartbroken, that they're upset for personal reasons. Meanwhile, he's also still asking Eileen for more money, he's saying maybe you need to sell your car, maybe even sell your house to get me the cash. And she says, no, no, wait a second, I have a better idea. Why don't I sell your designer clothes and make some quick cash, it's a much better way, and he's down for it. So when she packed up his clothes in suitcases and loaded them into the car by herself, he didn't help, he said, there's a letter I want you to read that I wrote, read it on the plane. And it is a very romantic letter, how he wants her to be his wife, how he wants her to be the mother of his kids, and he says, I appreciate you helping me out, I am worth it. And she's selling all his Gucci, his Louis Vuitton, his Dior clothes, she's bringing in thousands, and he's becoming more and more desperate with every minute. He's saying, I have to stay in a hostel, I've got no money, he's sending her pictures from the hostel, saying I'm like the homeless king. And then he tells her he's gonna be flying from Prague to Greece. And she alerts the police, and when he lands in Greece, he gets arrested. He's extradited to Israel, and he was sentenced to 15 months in prison, which seems like a light sentence for someone that caused such devastation to people's lives. And moreover, he only ended up serving five of those months. And between 2017 to 2019, the police estimate that he's swindled up to $10 million. Since then, he's been living in Israel as a free man, and he's back to posting on social media his lavish lifestyle on a helicopter with his new model girlfriend, in fast cars, on yachts, on planes. So these women have kind of stepped forward to give their story on Netflix, on Dateline interviews, and to put his face on blast so that other women are not also the victim of his scheme. So now I wanna talk about the red flags that were there at the very beginning that were ignored and why I would never have swiped right on this guy. So the biggest red flag begins on his Tinder profile. His pictures in front of his Ferrari, on the plane, flashing his watch, on the back of a yacht. To put that on your dating profile is very try hard. I would look at that and I would not see that as a high value man. In fact, I would see it as the opposite. I would see that as someone trying to push an image or promote a certain image or lifestyle. A serious high value man, high caliber man is not gonna be doing that. They're not gonna be flashing their Rolex Patek uh, Richard Mill watches. They're not going to be posting themselves in their Ferrari. They're not going to be posting themselves on jets. And his Tinder was connected to his Instagram. If you think about it like this, if you're a serious businessman, you have employees, you have colleagues, you have business associates, you want the right image for your business. You are not going to put out images like that because they can be damaging. They, you want to appear very low key. The next red flag is the way he dresses. He is dressing in a very flashy, tacky way. Louis Vuitton with Gucci and like all the logos. There's nothing classy about the way he dresses. Someone who is at the level he claims to be and who is a serious businessman doesn't generally dress like that. 
You have, for example, like the tech entrepreneurs, and they dress very low key. The Evan Spiegels, the uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they're wearing polo t shirts, denim jeans, and some Converse. Like, they don't need to show to the world because everyone knows who they are. It's not benefiting them. Then you have maybe the guys who do like to dress very well, but it's very discreet. So they would be wearing Laura Piana or Brunello Cuccinelli, high quality materials and fabrics, but just without all the logos. Within 24 hours, he's inviting her on a private jet to Bulgaria. A lot of her friends expressed some worry. She was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm heading to Bulgaria. She boards the plane and he has a woman there already on the plane who apparently is his ex-girlfriend who he has a kid with. And it's very strange that he would think that that would be appropriate as a second date to come with his child and his ex-girlfriend. This is a rather bizarre turn of events. That when you hear about these scams that have a romantic component, you think, wow, they must be such a good lover. You think that he must be like a Casanova, that he had all these sweet romantic words and that he must be really empathetic, that he was really good at playing on emotions and giving it that intensity but it couldn't be further from the truth. If you look at the 100 roses, the voice notes, the pictures, they're very simplistic. They work on very basic desires such as validation or attention. Even the letter he wrote to Eileen after she was packing up his clothes to sell, it was very much like, thank you for not giving up on me. I want you to be the mother of my kids. I will see you as my future wife. Very simplistic, very basic. It didn't work with her because she'd already checked out at this point. But you can see how he was trying to work on those basic desires of women. So the victims are falling in love with the words that they need to hear. He gives them validation. He gives them attention. They're thinking he's the heir of some multi-billion diamond fortune. And they put him on a pedestal. They admire him. Wow, he must think I'm really special. It didn't matter to them that the messages themselves were badly written, were broken English, that they were superficial, that there was no depth to them. Just the fact that he was showing them an interest and validating them was all they needed. Another standout point is that he continues this long distance relationship. He says he wants to move in with her. Cecilia is going on flat viewings. He tells her it's gonna be 15,000 a month. She's FaceTiming him. She says, oh, it feels so good because we're choosing it flat together. Honey, he's not even there with you. He's abroad, like, it's just a delusion. It's a fantasy. This is a clear example of the love addict and the love avoidant at an extreme level because he's not even there and she is desperate for this relationship way more than he is. She's got this fantasy in her head and the truth of it is that they are effectively pen pals. Their relationship exists only virtually through voice notes, through messages, through pictures. Cecilia says, what was so heartbreaking was that the man I thought was my boyfriend was not. This person didn't even exist. And with a lot of these scams, even when the victim finds out this person is a fraudster, is a con artist, it doesn't diminish the feelings of love. He's saying at this point, you know, I need to fly around the world, I need to maintain this party lifestyle because it's all to do with my work and it's good for my business, for my image. And I'm just thinking, if a guy told me that he needed to party for his business's work, alarm <laughs> bells. Okay, the next point to mention is he says after one month he needs help, that he has a problem, his enemies are tracking him, and that he needs cash that's untraceable. If you are the son of a billionaire, or even if you're a very wealthy multimillionaire with a successful business, why would you need to ask your girlfriend for cash? Why would you not ask your dad, your family, your business associates, or some other friends why your girlfriend of one month is being asked for cash? He has Patek watches, he has Richard Mille watches, he has all watches. If you're that desperate for cash, sell one of your watches. And the way he says, I need the funds to be untraceable, that is just so dodgy. Like, that screams con artist, like, scammer. It's also components of Machiavellianism, where he was able to delay gratification. It wasn't an instant, impulsive thing. He would meet his victims and he would wait for at least a month, sometimes longer, before defrauding them of whatever they could give. There's a point in the documentary where Cecilia says that she found out he was still on Tinder, even when he's claiming that she's his girlfriend and she brings it up with him because she's heartbroken. She sees he's on Tinder, that he's been active. He says, no, I have deleted the app. I'm no longer on it. You're the only one for me. 
you are the only one for me. Again, so cliche. The next big giveaway is the bodyguard slash business associate. We're not talking any serious level of security here. This is just one guy. If you actually have security, you have at least two guys. One would be a driver and one would be able to get out of the car as and when needed. If you are really in jeopardy and there's a security problem, you're not just having one bodyguard hanging around. He's not got an earpiece and he's not communicating with anyone. There's no security going on. He strategically put characters in place that would legitimize his lifestyle, such as the bodyguard, such as the ex-girlfriend with the kid. Yeah. Simon wouldn't be able to manipulate most people, but he only needed some people to manipulate and those were the ones he targeted. He's in complete denial, he says it's fake news. This all is characteristic of someone with grandiose narcissism. They're overconfident, attention-seeking, arrogant, angry, and dominant. The worst thing of all is that Simon Levi, not only is he a free man, but he will actually gain so much more attention, more fame and notoriety. He's a smart guy in certain ways and he will definitely use this media attention to make himself more money. I mean, we have to look at the positives and I know that Cecilia and Peniel have now formed this amazing friendship and they are spreading the word, they're putting his face on blast so that he's not able to defraud more women. So I think what they're doing is amazing and I know it took a lot of courage to speak up. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. You can share them in the comments below. We, it always generates great dialogue. I'd love to hear what you'd like to see next on my channel. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, come join, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.